Dino, you see anything wrong here? Got no engine, do we, Dino? All right guys, as y'all can tell, we have the engine out of the RX-7 at the moment, but don't worry, I will get the car back running. I promise you it won't be sitting down for long because I'm gonna miss that car, let me tell you. Because I, not that y'all really got to see it on the YouTube channel, whatever, but I actually drove that car a lot. Like I put a lot of miles on that thing. <laughs> but we got the engine sitting out right here. Got to basically just kind of cleaned it up real quick. So, it, you know, it's not so grimy to work on because I had the uh, oil pressure sensor, whatever, like explode and cover the car in oil. But anyway, so we got it cleaned up real quick. I'm going to get this thing dressed up, put the oil pan and the engine mounts on it, and then we are going to slide it into the 350Z. Hopefully, just that easy. But really didn't want to bore you guys with me just pulling the engine because that's not, I don't see that that's going to be really entertaining for you guys. But if you want to see that stuff, let me know. But I'm gonna lift this thing up. We have to change the oil pan, put the mounts on it, and it should just slide into the Z with no issues. Dino's not much help, but he's hanging out. It might be a bit cold for him because it's really cold outside. But yeah, so I'm gonna get that done and then we'll uh, see how big of a pain in the, you know what, it's gonna be to get it inside this thing. All right guys, um, yes, of course, this is crazy, crazy sketchy. I know, I'm not gonna let something as stupid as not having the proper tools or money stop me from doing stuff, because I want a race car too. <laughs> but anyway, it's extremely cold out here. If you can't tell by the oil, look at this thing, it's like freaking pudding. Like I just cracked it, look how slow, like how thick it is. That's craziness. Yeah. I think I've got like a quart of oil out of this engine so far. But yeah, we gotta drop this pan. And like I said, I know this is extremely dangerous. I don't recommend anyone do this this way. But, <clears throat> but like I was saying, um, I gotta do what I gotta do. So I need to get this oil pan off so I can get the front sump pan on that way. I can get this engine in the car before the bad weather hits because I think we're about to get some really bad weather and it's gonna be snowy and icy and all that bad stuff. And if I get the big heavy stuff done, like the engine and transmission in the car, I can run in and out of the house and stay warm and do the stupid stuff like getting my seats mounted or you know, finish the wiring up, stuff like that. So, you know, I'm uh, you know, right or wrong, whatever, I'm very, or I think I'm very crafty about getting stuff done because I don't have a lot of money. So I'm always amazed at the stuff I pull off with uh, my sugar water budget that I have. But like I said, so I can put like a little space heater in the car, keep the car nice and warm and I can stay in the car and you know do stuff like put the shifter on, um, do the wiring, stuff like that. Because <laughs> I don't have a shop, guys. Everything you see on this channel is done under an awning on the dirt. So yeah. Uh, we, li we live roughing her. We, li we roughing it around here. Yeah, I'm gonna wait an hour for this oil drain. Because, <laughs> as you can tell, we're not getting far. And before someone's like, oh, you just gotta take the cap off. Done that. Caps off. But yeah, so as soon as this pudding gets out of the engine, I'm going to drop the pan and uh, probably not even look and see the condition of stuff. I'm just gonna throw that in there because if this thing blows up, I'm not. I don't want it to, but it wouldn't be the, the worst thing that could happen. But yeah, I don't know who, th this car had like a small oil pan leak. I don't know who decided that the JB Weld was like a good fix. I'm sure it might have slowed it down a little bit, but it's always had like a little leak there. So I'm hoping putting this oil pan on will actually... Um, 100% seal this thing up and get rid of all the leaks. If not, maybe it might be a rear main or something. I'm not sure, but anyway. I know I gotta get the valve cover too, because you can kind of see they're leaking a little bit, but 
yeah but anyway but yeah I'm hoping to put a 5.3 aluminum block 5.3 in this thing eventually so I don't want to damage the LS1 you know it'd be nice to have it as a backup for the uh, Corvette or something but yeah I definitely want like I definitely want a 5.3 so I can just like thrash and have a good time with this thing and not really have to worry about it financially um, but yeah I said y'all didn't even get to see it because I'm the world's worst YouTuber, but I drove the FD a lot. I mean a lot. So, and I was kind of getting a little brave with it, if you can't tell from the last video that y'all seen of it. So, I was already thinking about taking it to a drift event, and I think um, that would have been a bad idea. But, so I can hurry up and get this done, have the Z together, and the Z can be my who cares thrash car because if I crash it or whatever, you know. Not that I want to, I'm not gonna like intentionally destroy the car, but if something does happen, it's easy. I ain't gonna say easy. It's replaceable, not like the FDR X7. Like I couldn't even afford what they, they're selling for now. If something happened to any one of my FDs, I would just not have another one because I can't afford them. So I just got lucky and picked up the two that I have when I got them. And I'm just rambling the whole entire time by waiting on this thing to drain. But anyway, I guess it's enough of me rambling. I'll see you guys once this is uh, done oozing out. All right, well, not that you can really see anything, but got the oil pan off. Just gonna try to wipe this the best I can, the surface right here, and uh, switch out the pickup tube. And throw the oil pan on, it is kind of grimy under here, but like I said, <laughs> It is what it is, guys. But yeah, so bought this little guy. It's supposed to like stabilize the pickup tube more, prevent it from like blowing out. So I got that on there. Got a fresh gasket. Really sucks to lay nice stuff on the ground, but. And we have the front sump pan, which I definitely don't want to sit on the ground. Got some nice baffling and stuff in there. So get that on there. And uh, throw the mounts on. And then it's gonna put it in the car. So yeah, that's sweet. All right. Dino's still hanging out, even though he's cold. It's a true, true buddy right there. Right. And right, Dino. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because it's really cold out here. Stretching, stretching, stretching it out. But yeah, you guys can tell it's really nasty. Don't, boy. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's been leaking. Maybe the rear main seal, but I'll buy a clutch and fix that later. But they did put some JB Weld and stuff right there. So hopefully it was just right here on this little corner. All right, let's make it happen, Captain. All right, <laughs> like always, that turned out to be way more of a headache than I was hoping, but we have everything ready to go into the car. Well, almost, anyway. So, issue I had are these guys. Oil pan bolts, the factory bolts. As you can imagine, the factory oil pan is a cast aluminum piece, which is like massively thick, and the aftermarket one is like, you know, stamped steel, freaking, Super thin. So, you can't tighten these down enough before it ends up bottoming out in the block. So, got the old pan on there, kind of rigged up right now. I'm trying to figure out if I want to like take a death wheel and cut each one of these down or just run to O'Reilly's and pick up some that are smaller or shorter, not smaller. Yeah. But anyway, I'll let you guys look at it real quick. Bam! Bam! Let it focus up. Got the mounts on. Everything's locked-tighted and done correctly, I hope. Kind of knocked out all that JB Whale that was right there as best I could. I got the oil filter relocation adapter bracket thing on there. Still got to put some Teflon thread on these guys and tighten those up. Um, yeah, I got some temporary... Ooh. 
I got some bolts in here temporary just because I didn't know that was an issue and you had to put silicone on the corners so I didn't want it to dry up so I went ahead and just put some some nuts on them and ran them down snug so hopefully that won't be an issue but yeah we got the mounts all up and I hate how that's open at the bottom I gotta get some kind of make like a little cover tray or something because last thing you want is like a rock or something to pop up and hop in there and like just destroy your flywheel and trust me i have the type of luck where it will happen i promise you so you can make like a little sheet cover i can bolt it right there or something yeah if they don't they might already make something like that make check but anyway doesn't look too bad now i just gotta get the arcs get the uh get these bolts cut and push the 350z over here and go ahead and set the engine in and uh, probably call it quits on that. But yeah, once I get that done, I don't know, we'll see. Because like I said, it's kind of cold and it's already getting dark. It's always something. If these bolts were like correct, it would be done. But yeah. If I had time, I could just order some ARP or something like that. But once again, I don't have the time or the patience, so we gotta figure it out. Probably gonna cut them. All right. All right, as you can tell, it is, it's extremely dark now. Um, I actually ended up going to O'Reilly's and picking up some bolts because I didn't feel like cutting all those down. That was gonna be some nonsense. But anyway, so I'm gonna throw these in real quick and then we gotta push the car over here, line it up, and then just drop it in. I'll put the, the uh, the cross member and get the motor and everything tightened down might try to fit the headers and hook the exhaust up stuff like that but anyway let's get to it Ooh. man I'm finally about to get a race car well the diff and the 350z <laughs> oh yeah you're careful <laughs> That's what I was like, who are you talking to <laughs> I know. It's cold outside, isn't it, buddy? Now set it on fire. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> well, it's in there. I would move that bucket that has that, that brake clean all in it before you do that. Ow! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. It's burning. Why do we both do the same reaction? <laughs> I'm not supposed to go up that fast. Are you supposed to set them on fire? I think you're supposed to, right? What? Set them on fire. Too late enough? Yeah. Well, it looks cool. It's kind of warm. Oh, dude, that's like that thing is burning on the inside, like pretty bad. <laughs> well, yes, a lot. There's a lot of it in there. Hopefully, no fucking sensors in there. No. Maybe. Burning the stump down there. Yeah. Let's let's turn away because it's getting kind of bad over there. <laughs> Yeah, guys, we're just kind of goofing off. Like, so we're welding the diff because he's actually going to Lanier next weekend for the drift event, which is going to be cool. I'm really excited. He's finally going, so it should be fun. I'm going to record a lot of his bad driving. A lot of it. Like, every spin out. Like, spin out. Every single thing. <laughs> I'm going to record it. <laughs> yeah, we got this junk in there. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, didn't record much just because it was like being a little irritating because it's like really cold and i put the mounts on backwards or donald put the mounts on backwards you know is what it is am i screwing up <laughs> but yeah so yeah but we'll probably try to mock the headers up it's, like it's getting dangerous over there <laughs> dude that thing is still burning like yeah it's burning the crease on the old uh yep. well we, we had to heat the gears anyway 
Well, I mean, I don't think you should let it burn because you got rubber seals in there. It's gonna leak like crazy. You might want to pour some water in that thing. Oh. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> Here, hold this camera. Hold the camera. <laughs> That's not working. Hold the camera. Obviously, <laughs> put water all the way. Ah! <laughs> that worked. Look at, look at me <laughs> being so so smart. <laughs> Surprised you ain't college educated. Yeah, you know I am a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little educated, edumacated. <laughs> Alright guys, that win, I know you're just like probably driving you crazy, but anyway. We're going to finish cleaning this thing up, weld that, like I said, I might try to mess this thing a little bit more, I don't know, it's getting kind of cold, but we'll see. Alright guys, it is extreme, I got dirt all on my face. Alright y'all, I'm done. It's really starting to get like kind of, you know, sleety and nasty outside and I'm just burning out. This thing has been pain in the... Mm. So many swear words. Like I said, had a little issue, put the engine mounts on backwards, that was my fault. But the ISR instructions are kind of whack, I ain't even gonna lie. But, the driver's side header. Mmm. So if you're doing this swap and you're using the ISR stuff, let me give you some some really good advice. Sit the headers in the engine bay, then install the engine. So just trust me on this. I'm gonna show you guys where we're at real quick. <laughs> I know the lighting and stuff is gonna be bad, guys. Just deal with me. But the engine is sitting in the car. We got the headers in. Like so this driver side is a major pain in the you know what? So I mean, it's like a lot of clearance, so I was kinda happy with that, even though I just like destroyed hammer this one. So but yeah. So we got some a lot more stuff to do obviously, but like so I'm done for the night. So calling it quits. <laughs> but alright guys. I greatly appreciate you sticking around and watching this and subscribing and liking and all that good stuff. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. And uh, I'm going to have to get warmed up. So we'll see you guys on the next one.